story it wasn't clicking to unmute there for a second I don't know what that was about but um I'm back so as I promised I have created a 12 by 12 sketch for the layout that we've been working on over the course of the last I don't know month or so and okay just let me close this because I don't need this anymore so if you remember correctly I created an eight and a half by eleven sketch and we did some pages with it which I totally love so I'll just show you a few of the examples so this was the original sketch right and we created we started with a layout from with in this together like that and it's super cute it's got a little flip flap thing happening and then we went ahead and I created it with Daisy Meadows just to show you how much you can change up a simple sketch and make them look completely different. Then, just for fun, we used Eat, Love, Play. Nope, Eat, Play, Love. You guys know I can't, for some reason, I got that in there backwards. I wanted the love in the middle, not at the end. So um, we, I created all three of these layouts using that same eight and a half by 11 sketch. And so last week I converted it to a 12 by 12 sketch and created a layout with party time. And Okay, so I have to tell you, today is the day I clean my office. So, in between idea books, I clean my office. And I don't see it right now. Oh, because it's right here on my desk. Oh my goodness, you guys. So, then last week, hey! So then last week I took that eight and a half by 11 sketch and I played around with it and I created a, a double page 12 by 12 spread. We have a loop and a little flip flap here and I love this little journaling box. So this is just one of the PML cards and then I took the little stickers that um, are on the bottom of the party time and they're all sorts of little words and I actually worked them into my journaling. So I love the way it turned out. So from this, then I created a master sketch. So it is all ready to download. See, I was being organized in one area and that was just a little bit too much for me, apparently. So there is a master sketch for the 12 by 12 now. So if you want the download, just comment sketch and I'll come back after and I'll send you in the right direction. So I let you guys vote. And so it was interesting. So you are enough. I let you vote between you are enough and Hillside Cottage. And I'll tell you, you are enough took off right away. And then Hillside Cottage crept up super close, but didn't quite make it. But it was close enough that I will do Hillside Cottage also with this sketch. So I'll do that next week because it was pretty close. I was surprised because when You Are Enough took off like that, I thought, oh, well, hands down, but it was actually closer than I thought it was going to be. So I will, like some people even asked for both. So um, I will do that next week. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I look like I'm looking at a ghost because um, my husband came home to take a webinar and um, so it's disturbing the animals. So 
he closed the door to his office and I don't have the door completely close to my office. So the dogs are just trying to decide if they want to come in here or not. So they could come in here at any second. What they don't like that the door is three quarters of the way closed. I was just trying to make it a little bit um, quieter so that he could uh, hear over my voice talking. Yeah, we're going to do, and I actually, I even know my photos I'm going to use already. So, okay. So, here is what we're going to do. So, I have my pictures printed. So, for whoever saw the teaser earlier, I have my pictures printed. So, this is what we're going to start with. And whoever hasn't seen the You Are Enough papers collection. So, it's kind of two sets of colors. There's more um, blues and then more like pinky purples. So like there's a peach and peach ballerina um, and, and then the blues. So like sapphire glacier. So today I wanted to go with the bluer end. So that's what we're going to play with today. So like I picked out this paper and this paper, I'll show you along the way. But, and then the rose gold accents in real life are beautiful. I don't know if we're going to use them today. I have cut up, I used, I have a whole pile of thin cuts, pre-cut, that I think are going to be perfect. So, um, here we go. So I have my photos. And so for the sketch, there is one six, six, and a, six by four, and then matted, right? So it's, it tells you the mat size and everything. And then there's two three by fours and two more four by sixes. So that's how we're gonna start. So I have printed my photos. Somebody asked because in the photo, you could see that my two photos were attached before I started. So I printed two three by fours on my same four by six. And I do that in um, the Project Life app. Um, I can do a demo probably next week. I need to load some photos up onto something where I can actually show you the app because the app doesn't work on the computer. It only works on like my phone or I think I've done a demo with my iPad before. So I just would have to get some photos in there and I can show you how I actually print the two three by fours on a single four by six. It makes it super easy to do it at home and I know so many people are printing at home right now. So one thing that I like is I like the little twine across the bottom of my photographs. So I haven't done it in a while so I thought I, thought I would do it today. So I pre-did most of it because you don't need to watch me uh, doing all of them, but I left one because I thought I would show you. So I have actually, I use the photo mats because I like this little tiny um, white border or I print my photos with a white border. It just kind of depends. Um, to be super honest with you, today I forgot to print them with the border, so I trimmed them and added them to the border. So then I just wrapped my twine around my photographs and tied it. I've added 3D foam tape to the back, so just the thin one. And then it does it doesn't then your photo doesn't get that little bump in it. So I'm just gonna peel off the backing, and then this is my last photo, and then we're ready to go. So I have picked for my background, I have two pieces of mint. And you know what we'll do? Maybe we'll cut the middles out so you guys can see how you can gut the um, cardstock. Because we don't actually, the white daisy is like 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So it's just got that super um, thin border across the top. So now when I add my photo, I'm just going to center it and then I can play with my twine. 
Okay, and then I have, um, hey Diane. Um, I always have one pair of scissors. Oh, you know what? I'll put you big on my desk because you don't need to see my face big, probably. I always have my one pair of scissors that uh, are the regular scissors that I use for twine. I find it far easier for um, cutting twine and ribbon with them. And then I'm just going to take my piercing tool and just pull out the little threads. So this, these pictures, I knew because I knew I wanted to use this piece of paper. I knew even the photos I was going to use. So these are from my son's graduation. And the funny part is there's more photos of the other three of us than me and my son and my husband and daughter. He, I'll say he's in fewer of the photos. Okay. So, like I said, we have a big, huge piece of white. So we'll gut out the middles of the cardstock. And then I can use that mint. I could have used it to map my photographs. Um, Oh, but my photographs are already matted, so I will just put it away in my cupboard. But this way, you can save a whole pile of cardstock. So I just need a very thin border, so I'm going to cut out the center. So I'll leave like a one inch border everywhere. So I've got this on my trimmer at the one inch mark. I'm going to put my trimmer blade down. Oh, you can't see that. I haven't done this in a while on camera. Quite often I do it before, but so I haven't actually pushed my blade down, but I'll just push it in at the 11 inch mark. So this is going to give me a one inch border all the way around. So I'm just going to trim up to the one inch mark and it doesn't have to be perfect because nobody is going to see this, right? So as long as you're relatively close and don't put, cut off too much, like you want enough room that your border is going to be stable. So I'm just turning it and I'm putting it in at the one inch mark. I'm running my blade from 1 to 11 or 11 to 1, depending on which way you're looking at it. So quite often what I will do with inside piece is I do use it for matting my photographs because then you know that they're going to coordinate. They will, um, you know, it's typically your accent color if you're obviously if you're using it for the border. Okay. Or you can do four and a half inch scripts and miter the corners. Yep, absolutely. This also then makes your layout lighter, right? So if you're worried about your albums getting heavy from all the layers of paper, this is helpful. To be super honest, most of the time I don't do it because I don't think about it. But I know lots of people do worry about the weight of their layouts. Okay, so now we have two frames and I'll set those aside. And we'll go back. Okay. Now I can put my tray of goodies back there. Okay, so we have, like I said, I have mint. And in my party time one, I did sapphire with the white. Okay, so now I'm just going to run my adhesive around the edge and then lay it down. Sorry, it's going to bounce because of all the white. It's going to try and um, auto adjust for to white balance the white. 
So for whoever wants the sketch, don't forget to comment sketch and then I'll add it um, underneath your comment after. Okay, so just as easy as that, we're going to add our left hand side. We'll just get this down. So there are our pieces for our left hand side and then we're going to do our right hand side. And you might have noticed I pulled out some holographic paper. So pretty. So I haven't had holographic paper in a how to in a while. So I thought so this is funny, whoever watches me, even when it's white cardstock, and it's obviously white on both sides, it's the same with black. Sorry, I always flip it over to add my adhesive out of sheer habit. Okay, so there we go. Now we have our backgrounds done. So I knew for sure I wanted to use this piece of paper because I knew what our outfits looked like and I thought it would be perfect. So here we go. Now I have a journaling box and let's do the left hand side first. So like I said, when I had when I was trying to work out from the original, which was eight and a half by eleven, you're obviously going from a rectangle to a square. And I wanted to make it um, user friendly for um, typically typical sized photographs, right? So I made sure that we could fit some photos on here. So this piece here, the rose gold is just beautiful. So then on the back, you could see the other color tones, right? But I knew I wanted to play up those colors a little bit. That's why I pulled out in the peach here and this multicolored piece. So, cause it has like the, um, mulberry and um, peach and ballerina in it. Okay. And so let's, I'm going to put this one down. I'm going to move that. I haven't actually touched this down onto my um, background just yet. So I'm going to move it over. Just a little bit. Okay, and then, so then there's two pieces that are both 11 by one and a half and so I picked the peach versus the ballerina and I'll show you why in a second but we are going to add um, I'm totally gonna sneeze I know it um, we're gonna add some flowers the thin cut flowers on here so I wanted to um, do them in the ballerina and I actually use like the ballerina patterned cardstock like this. So um, this piece I need and then I have my zip strip. So like how pretty is that? And it's like not even done you guys. So So the nice thing about using the Versamat is I can get everything lined up and then my second page will be the same. 
So this is the one of the zip strips with the little butterflies. Okay. So we're just, like I said, we're just roughing it in, but here's one photo. And then you have the two smaller photos here. So we're gonna go like this. Okay, I'm just gonna set this aside for right now. And then here's our right hand side. So same kind of thing, it's not super complicated. And it's kind of, I've kind of repeated the pattern, but it's a little bit different. So this is our cross piece. And I'm going to do the two pieces of paper the same on the inside. And then I love this piece. This like galaxy one with the... Uh, um, uh, the hexagon piece is by far my favorite. I would take a whole package of the hexagon paper if I could. I love the, the shape hexagon though, so that's probably part of the um, reasoning why. So just like our party time one here, we used um, the Flamingo Shimmer Trim. So I have Shimmer Trim, we're gonna use Bluebell. We'll do that once I get my base pages down. So. And the back side of this is really cool too. It's like a, a watercolor wash. It's almost um, painful to cut some of the pieces of paper, I have to say. So, but it did make a very nice workshop. So, my you are enough one is a little bit bigger than normal because there's it's because it's the um, national scrapbooking month paper pack it's a bigger um, collection so it is 12 scrapbooking pages versus my regular ones are just four and that's partially because um So I'm gonna have to decide if I wanna peel that up to put my shimmer trim down. Underneath or on top. Okay, I think I'm gonna put it underneath. So I grabbed the Bluebell Shimmer Trim. And like that so everybody knows I just have this one strip of whoop, adhesive that I have on the side of my desk and I just stick my shimmer trim on the adhesive and then the backing comes off and stays on the edge of my desk And it just makes it very simple. Okay. Let's. I will go and fix that other side without the shimmer trim in one second. So I just gotta make sure I get my writing going the right direction because there's a script on here. So I just wanna make sure I'm not putting that on upside down, that's for sure. Okay, so now these are going like this. Okay, like that. 
Now we're gonna fix this side and put my shimmer trim down. So, Like I said, we will for sure come back and because it was so close this time, I will do the hillside one next week. So, and I'll use this exact same sketch and just to show you again that you can take the same sketch and use it over and over again and just adapt it. So like with other, the eight and a half by 11, I'm just gonna weight that down there for a second. Um, we did one, so the first one was just like paper and stickers from the paper pack. And then the second one we did was all stamping. So obviously paper and stickers, but we just did stamping and coloring. And then the third time was um, paper and then we used the Cricut cuts. So by switching it up, they all look so different. Okay. So, here we go. Okay, and I cut my title. And like I said, so I played with lots of thin cuts for this. So I'm gonna show you all the ones. So then I have a journaling box for this one. So I used, like look how pretty that sapphire is. So it's got rose gold embedded in it. We're gonna make a little journaling box here. We're just going to tack it down. And typically when I do this, I use this adhesive. I just add a little tiny bit on the back and then plop it down onto my Versamat and then I can see my lines. I have a ruler and I thought for this one, the charcoal pen would be really nice to do the lines. So I'm going to quickly add my lines to this one. I think I might stamp up here, so I'm gonna put my first line a little bit farther down. So I'm just using the charcoal and, or pewter, sorry, and I have the point three here but there are three different sizes depending on what you prefer. So, and I'm just, because I know how uh, much space my handwriting takes, and then I'm just leaving a, like an eighth of an inch on each side, and I'm just lining my ruler up with each side of my Versamat on the quarter inch lines. You could also use a Picture My Life card. Um, in the Story by Stacy line, there's also um, a package that has lots of journaling boxes if you prefer. So, I thought it would be fun to have, you can't really probably tell on screen at all any difference between this and black, but I'm gonna use black to journal. So the lines will be just a little bit lighter underneath my journaling. Okay, almost done. I knew I will. I know I will have a lot to say, even though I don't have a ton of pictures of the nighttime events, because this was like the safe grad part. Okay. 
And I, honestly, we weren't really at the safe grab part for very long. So, just basically long enough to eat the dinner and leave. Okay. So, there we go. So, like I said, I used the pewter pen and exactly you have to you have to use it there'll always be more paper I promise there'll always be another pretty paper to use um, cut it up and use it and really like if you need you can totally get another package so somehow there's adhesive over here so i'm just going to take that off we'll get covered up but i don't even know where that came from you guys okay so here's what we've got going on okay so and i love that there are full photographs so and these are full four by sixes. Like I said, they're just printed on a um, two three by fours. Okay, so I <laughs> I thin cut my title and I put it in here so I wouldn't lose anything. So I used for the tight. Here's all the thin cuts. So I'm gonna try and pull them over as I remember. Okay, so this is my favorite. So the simple sheriff. Um, thin cuts. I love them. They're awesome for big titles or little titles. So like a subtitle. I think I just dropped. Aha, there's the, the top of the eye. So I cut Family Matters. That's our title. And I used the Bluebell glitter paper. You guys are going to have to tell me though, make sure I'm not spelling something wrong because sometimes when you're not really paying attention, that happens. Okay, so, no, nope, I think. I normally write it down on a piece of paper so it's still in front of me because I start talking and then I'm not paying attention and I will glue my letters down out of order. So, but at least I thought it was perfect to put it in my little container while I was waiting. So, that I didn't lose anything. Okay. Okay. We're not gluing anything down yet because I'm going to pull in some of the embellishing. And I have to flip over that little top of the eye. Okay, so here is some of the stuff that I have cut out. So I'm not sure how it's all going to go down because I just kind of guessed. So I used the butterfly and this butterfly is from the You Are Enough um, special. So I used this one. There's also a stamp and thin cut that is um, together. But this one is the layered butterflies and you can see I was playing around with it yesterday. But this is huge. So this huge butterfly is three layers and this smaller butterfly is two layers. I'll show you in relation to my photograph how big the big butterfly is. So that so that's a four by six photograph. So that shows you how big that butterfly is. So it's beautiful, but we're not using this today. For sure, 
I'll come back and um, add the link in for the sketch after I'm finished. So for whoever comments sketch, don't worry, I'll come back right at the end. I made sure it was all uploaded and ready to go. So I cut the smaller butterfly and like I said, so I pulled out holographic paper. It could do funny things to my camera too, just so you know. But I cut two of the tops of the little butterfly and this one's Glacier. We're gonna add this in our journaling box over here. There's also butterfly sequins that go with this special and we're probably going to um, use these to Okay, sorry, I have to read Jalen's comment now. LOL, I have six boxes and a tote full of unused kits. I still have to try to tell myself as well. If you have any self-help tips, I don't have self-help tips, just use it. Okay, so I don't know, okay, I don't know who all knows exactly my background but um, I started scrapbooking in 2001 when my son was born. How funny, we're, we're scrapbooking him. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell, this, tell you this, the tips as we go. So um, I played with the flower, so the layered flower thin cut and the leaves. So, they're all magnetically stuck together. So I have par like parts of the 3D flower and then this, the leaves, okay? So I started scrapbooking in 2001. And for whoever, and okay, so my leaves are holographic, just so, just so we know. So for whoever doesn't know, I was a, a creative memories consultant first. And um, I was um, very, like I blogged, I was super active as a creative memories consultant. I was on the design team, which was super fun and exciting. And then they, for sure pulling, they went bankrupt. So, yes, and I know that they're back and all those things, but I'm, I'm trying to talk you into using up your paper. So, and close to my heart does bring back my pack. So you might as well use it because eventually it'll come back. But it was, um, that was, difficult because of the position that I was in when it all happened. And, um, but I will tell you, you just need to use it. There will always be something else. There will always be another product you have to use. So use what you have. That Those are my self-help two cents for today. Okay. I don't know that that's helpful, but that's what I got. So I have a butterfly for over here, a couple of flowers. I'm kind of just roughing in what I think I want to have happen. So, and especially when close to my heart does the bring back my pack. I think you have to be, um, you might as well be using it because don't you feel like in order to justify buying it when it comes back, you might as well use it the first time. So I thought the flowers were fun like that with a little bit of the mixed um, cardstock in there. So this is the printed, I used the printed cardstock to swap them in the flowers. We're gonna create our flowers. I'm just kind of laying out everything that I want to have happen here. So, I overcut flowers because I knew I would just want to kind of play with them. Yep, use your stash, use what you have. There will always be another better paper, for sure.
Okay. This is, I think, something along the lines of what we're going to have happening here. And it's all about preserving your memories and it's not really about the paper anyway or the stickers or anything. Okay, so let's start gluing stuff down. So this is kind of the roughed in idea. So I'm gonna do a whole pile of flowers over here, the butterfly and my journaling box. I've got my photographs all ready to go down. My title says Family Matters. Please somebody tell me if it doesn't and I'll fix it. Okay. So, and I'll talk about the flowers as we go. I'm just gonna quickly add my photographs so they don't move. And then we'll start working on our flower clusters. So. Like there's some paper packs that um, I actually don't think that there is any paper pack that I haven't at least cut up and used. So you don't want to be collecting it. Okay. So now I'll add these photographs down and then we'll work on our flowers. And I think for our flower centers, you guys know how when I did that, um, the celebrate layout with the pockets that the pieces came out and we did that um, sequin confetti. I wanna kinda do that in the middle of the flowers. Like I want a blob of sequins. Okay, so I didn't, I thought I glued that down, but we didn't. Okay. So again, I have two tops. Yeah, I think I'll put it up there. Like it was funny. So in creative collaboration, every Tuesday I do a poll. And I asked, I asked a few weeks ago um, about um, was there a paper pack that, I forget how it was worded, but it was something like if there was a paper, basically if you could bring back a paper pack, what would it be? And it's funny because lots of them were ones that have already been brought back. Okay, so I'm just trying to decide about sticking my letters down because I want to make sure they're straight. So, it's just kind of hard to do without getting my head in your way. And that's like super boring to watch me glue letters down, I realize. So I'm gonna go from the end of my word and work backwards. And then I'll center my second word above. That was just about to be upside down. You guys are supposed to be watching me. I love this little um, letter thin cut. I don't think you can go wrong with a good alpha no matter what. And this is like so classic. It's perfect. So, and I did the bluebell to highlight the bluebell shimmer trim. We might have a lot of sparkle going on here, but I'm okay with that.
And as we um, are also talking about using your stash, make sure you're in your photographs, right? I think you guys will notice quite often that I scrapbook myself. So, now more often it's myself and my daughter because she's more happy to be in photographs than my son, but I still scrapbook him. And the funny part is that I started out scrapbooking him when he was a baby. So, and then I had to go back. Well, I didn't have to. I went back and scrapbooked like her early years because there's a like uh, four year difference between my kids. So I went back and scrapbooked her baby book and first couple of years after which I will say actually was far better than doing it in the moment I was much more selective about the things that I scrapbooked with him I just scrapbooked everything like everything he did right but going back and doing her after I was way more selective I picked I didn't scrapbook every single picture that we took because we take a lot of pictures my husband was an architectural student, so um, he has a huge love of photography. So we have a ton of photographs. It's always good and freaks everybody out when we when I do the who wants to guess how many photographs are in my iPhoto. Because it's actually like crazy. So and and we didn't like so when hannah was born we didn't we weren't digital we were still film and then because he was an architectural student like an architectural student we always shot we shot film for a long time after everybody went digital and we have slides and all sorts of fun things. When Hannah was born and it was still film, right? We would go and get like three copies because we didn't live close to my family. So we'd have to go and get like three copies printed of everything. So we could have one and then split up two others. So I'm just using liquid glass to adhere all my letters. So they would even be good here if like I wanted to put the year or the date. They're just kind of a fun size. That is a lot of photos on your phone. We have uh, I'll we'll maybe we'll do next week a guess how many photos Chris has in her iPhotos. That's always a good poll. Uh, not a good poll. That's always a good uh, let's guess. Okay, so I can get that out of the way. It's just kind of hard to gauge being straight from so far away. Normally I would be right on top of something. So. And for my eye, I'm just gonna drop my glue on my paper. Okay, done. So to create the flowers, we are going to um, break the fibers down of the paper a little bit. So let's make it. I actually can't tell you how many I have on my phone right at the moment because it's above my head. But, um, so I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've probably told this story before, but uh, so when I got a new Apple, 
it was a gift, like at my new iMac. Um, the, the, this one that I have right now, which is now old, but um, my husband gave it to me and um, when he went and had the data transfer done and the guy said to him, you do know how many photos you have on this computer, right? Before we do this, he's like, there's a ton. My husband's like, yep, I know. She wants them all. We actually have to go through and do some clean out, but okay. So I just have my bone folder and my flowers and I'm just going to break down the fibers a little bit by curling them. So just remember it's paper when you're doing this, so don't go like crazy. But I just wanna give them a little bit of depth. So I've got my finger right in the center and I'm kind of just rolling and pulling out the petals as we go. And I thought these, the colored um, cardstock would go really nicely with the regular cardstock. So the patterns all have that pretty rose gold in it. Wouldn't it be nice if we got some rose gold stuff in the new annual idea book? It's a little bit early for that, but I'm wishful or hopeful, I guess. Not wishful, I'm hopeful. Okay. So, and I'm gonna attach my layers together with glue dots. So I'm just using like a big glue dot in the middle. And then, like I said, my idea is I want to put um, bluebell sequins in the middle and um, just kind of like a little blob of them. And kind of because I was inspired by that, the Celebrate layout where they were like cascading down. As I said, I was cleaning up my office earlier and that happened to be one of the things that I put away. So now the holographic paper doesn't it's like a plasticky finish so it doesn't really um train the same kind of way as the regular cardstock so i will kind of pull it through my um with my bone, between my bone folder and my fingers, right? Sorry, I was trying to read Judy's comment. I am, I can, it's not completely opened there, so I'll have to look at it after. Okay, so I've got this blue one here, and then we're gonna do, so this is a ballerina one. So this is the ballerina with the um, rose gold. Okay, so and just preference, that's the way um, I wanted them. I didn't want them going this way, so I wanted them going the other way. You could do it both ways, though. We could do the flower this way. She, Deb was just asking why I didn't do them this way, like po poking up this way. Because you also have to remember that it's going to have a page protector on top of it too. So, okay. So if you think about, I'll do one both ways and then we'll look at them. My thought process is that this will flatten out, but still have, um, not texture, that's, um, form to it versus this if i push if you push down on that with a page protector it's going to go flat i don't know if that makes sense but that's why i'm doing it the backwards way okay and then this one i have two the same size but they're different colors
Okay, so now we could just quickly. Absolutely, Jean, for sure. As soon as I'm off, I will come back and help everybody out. I need a, like an assistant. So I'm just adding my dots on the back and I've just kind of offset some of them and then some of them are um, the same. So you could see I didn't offset this one, I just kind of layered it in so that, um, oh you think mine are going to look flatter, okay. So. There we go, they're gonna go like that. And then my leaves. So I have two leaves for over here. So I want one up here. And one is just a little bit lower. And if I need to, I can come back in and add a little bit of glue underneath there, but I'm pretty sure they should be okay. I need a smaller glue dot there. Oh, my, my smaller glue dots are the other way. So I'm still not used to that yet. They're just rolled the other way on the... Okay, so now I just need to tuck my leaves in. And I can just use... Um, Jean saying this, this paper set is all-time favorite. Oh, that's, that's a lot. That's saying a lot. It is, I will say, is very different than anything um, I remember Close to My Heart doing before. So, um, and I will say also, the more I create with it, the more I like it even. So, because um, first I did uh, my scrapbooking workshop. And then um, I did some classes, I've designed some classes. And like I said, the more I play with it, the more I like it. Okay, so we're gonna do our little um, sequin blobs in there in a second. So we'll just do our flowers on this side now. And I don't, ow. Oh need my verse mats underneath there anymore yes yeah, so to, like I said today was my day for cleaning up my office and transitioning to the next idea book so that's always a really good feeling for me I love this one with the two layers that are the um, rose, have little rose gold accents they're not like polka dots they're like little tiny scribbles this is, and I think this is my favorite piece of paper from that whole pack. So, I don't know why. I really like Ballerina though. So, so you'll also see these two are the same size, but I'm just going to offset them. So, these two are, um, exactly the same size and then the smaller one on top. So like that. Glue dots. Glue dots make everything so fast. Gotta love that. Don't get me wrong, I love glue, but glue dots make everything go nice and quick.
the geometric row, the um, rose golds. Those math classes. That's very cute, Judy. I'm sure. Okay, so one, and then I mix this one up. Because they're not going to be looking like real flowers anyway. I thought, well, let's just have some fun with the different colored layers. And with a full pack of paper too, because it is bigger, a uh, bigger pack, you're gonna get lots of use out of it. Like I said, like my regular scrapbooking workshop is 12 pages, right? So six double page spreads versus um, just a regular paper pack, it's like only four. So you've got lots of paper to play with, that's for sure. It's just hard, because for sure some of these pieces will be your favorites. for sure like on these pattern papers for sure I have some favorites like I told you this one and then um, the one with the and I actually really like this one too well okay so I like a lot of them so So I for sure already have more than one package. So you will see lots of lots of creations with it. And I love the fact that kind of it can be elegant or it can be just plain too, which is fun. So, and I know everybody got a sneak peek at the cardstock part of it for the NSD projects, but not the pattern paper, which is so fun. And it was so hard not to say things when people saw the um, cardstock first. And I'm like, oh, just wait till you see the paper if you like the cardstock. So. And lots of the, um, the pattern papers, I would say, will just be beautiful on their own as full like backgrounds. Oh. Okay, that's what we're going for here. And then just our holographic leaves. I love the holographic paper. So I know that the camera doesn't love it, but and it's super hard to photograph. I will tell you that also. So, okay, so let's glue this down and then we'll do our centers and we're all done. Oh, that'll be perfect, Jean. Exactly. It'll be good either way. So she just said she's they're expecting grandbaby number seven due in January. So boy or girl, I'm thinking it'll be beautiful for either. I totally, totally agree. It would make an awesome baby book or like milestone book.
because it's kind of got like that pastel feel, but there's also um, jewel tones in it too. It would definitely be beautiful. And you guys realize that I'm restraining myself from not adding embellishing thread in, into these clusters too. But that would be very pretty in there too, just saying. Okay, last flower, we're gonna glue it down and then we're gonna make our blobs of sequins. So if whoever wants the sketch, just comment sketch and I will come back and take care of that. Okay, so let's move that out of my way. So I think it's pretty. Okay, so this is what I wanna do. So I'm going to make like little piles of the sequins in the flowers and I think it'll just play up the holographic paper and the little bits of rose gold off of each of the flowers. So I can either like pick out what I want or I could just dump it depending. So I'm putting down like a pretty um, ample amount of liquid glass and then so I don't want that hurt I'm going to add lots of the like iridescent ones and the white ones and I'm kind of using a bunch of different sizes and I'm just piling them in there or even the bluebell ones. And then I'm just kind of picking some different sizes too. And just kind of messing around with them. So like that. So I'll lift it up so you can see. I should probably make sure that my everything is actually glued down before I do that. So that's kind of what I wanted for my centers. So it totally depends on whether you want it random or you want it more planned as to whether you would just dump them in or just lay them in. And I can even add like a little bit more glue. I could add up another layer if I want it. You could, it would also look really pretty with like the, uh, like a string of the sequins dumped down here, like from that layout. That layout though stresses everybody out. Oh, it would look really pretty even with like just the, the cascading sequins down here too. So we're almost done. I 
I know the leaves are so fun that I love, um, like I said, I love the holographic paper. So if I can squeeze it in somewhere, I am going to. So this is the dreamy um, holographic paper, which is my favorite out of all of them. So I think like the part that I like about those little sequin clusters is it kind of looks like really like the middle of a flower would look, right? With the, uh, I'm not good at the anatomy of a flower. Are those stamens in the middle? So on this one, I can add more of my bluebell ones in here. You know how they kind of look like they're all um, puffy and full of little hearts. That's kind of what I'm trying to do with the sequins. There we go. So you can see there's like just like five or six and it kind of looks like the center of a flower. I just have to be careful picking them up before it's all dry. I'm going to end up with sequins. Like the once they're once the glue is dry, they'll stay there. No problem. I'm just trying to decide if I need to add more sequins in other places but I don't think I do I think this is probably lots of sparkle Just one more. Oh, that's two, but that's okay. Okay. There we go. So that is how that turned out. So like I said, it's completely different, right? It looks completely different than the one we did with party time. I'm just not going to move it too much because I know my liquid glass is not dry yet, but um, just so you can see the little clusters a little bit better. And I will for sure photograph all of these, but okay, let's move this out of the way and then I'll bring back in the other one and I'll show you. So it's exactly the same sketch, but we've changed it up completely. Oops. So, so much for cleaning my office today, guys. No, no, I'm just kidding. It's still clean. I was going to say it's like a disaster zone, but it's not really. So, here is the original. Totally different feel, right? But you would never think when you see them, oh, well, there she used that sketch before, right? Oh, thank you, Sharon. And then here is the one from today. So that is how that turned out. 
So like I said, if you comment sketch, I'll come back in and I'll send you in the right direction to grab the link to um, download the sketch. And like I said, so when I let you guys pick, so I said, okay, so from after party time, I'll let you pick between You Are Enough and um, Hillside Cottage. And at the beginning, I did think that Hills uh, I did think that You Are Enough was going to run away with it, but Hillside Cottage caught back up and was super close. So next week, because I have a different live for later this week, but next week we will come back and we'll use our same sketch and we'll do something with Hillside Cottage and I'll adapt it somehow so we could talk through how I'm going to adapt it at that point. I actually have no idea yet. Thank you. Uh, I have no idea how I'll adapt it, but I'll do something different with it. And um, that is what I have for you guys today. If you have any questions, like I said, always just ask and just comment sketch and I can send you in the right direction. So have a great day guys and we will talk to you later. Bye bye.